Hi guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create pointer variables that can hold the memory addresses of other variables, and then how you can use the interaction operator with those pointer variables to be able to control a target variable remotely by using indirection. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, to create a pointer variable, we have to reuse the asterisk. Okay, so that guy right there. So remember, pointer variable is just a variable that holds another memory address, right? Or holds a memory address of some other variable. So we have to use this asterisk to denote that it is in fact a pointer, right? So if we wanted to hold the memory address of an integer variable, for example, we would specify the data type int, and then we would add the asterisk, and then we would name our variable as usual. Okay, so you could do something like that. All right. Um, if you wanted to create a variable that held the memory address of a double, well, then you just use that data type for double, and then you add your asterisk. Okay, and then you name it as you normally would. Okay, now um, C doesn't care if you put the asterisk anywhere, right? So my Visual Studio is auto-correcting it, but this will compile. Because remember, white space is ignored by the compiler, right? Now, once we have a variable that'll hold a memory address, you know, it's going to need a memory address. So how are we gonna give it one? Well, we can create, say, another integer variable, which I'll call x. Okay, and I'll assign to x 22, right? So x is a variable that holds an integer. P is a variable that holds a integer's memory address. So I'll assign 22 to x. So that's what's in x, right? And then I will assign to P the memory address of x. So how do we do that? We use the address operator, okay? So address operator is this guy right here, okay? And then we use the asterisk to define pointer variables, okay? Now, once we've done that, then you can see that we can use, since a pointer is just a variable, that happens to hold the memory address, we could send the contents of that variable to C out, Okay, and just like we always could, we could send the contents of an integer variable to see out, All right? So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see that we have a hexadecimal address right there on the top, and that is the memory address of that X variable for this particular run of our program. Okay, and then the 22 is the contents of X. So remember, a pointer is just a variable that holds a memory address. And in this case, right, P is holding the memory address of X. All right. So, so far, so good. Now, what if we wanted to use P to access the contents of X? Well, we can do that. Why? Because P has the memory address of X stored inside of it. So P is pointing to X. P is pointing to X, right? So I can now use either X, okay, of X, right? Um, this prints the contents of P, but I can use P to access the contents of X. How am I gonna use that? Or how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna use the indirection operator, which confusingly enough, happens to be an asterisk as well, all right? So what, how, how am I gonna do that? What are you talking about? Well, what I can do is, is I can use that asterisk, similar to how you use the address operator, right? I'll put it right in front of the pointer, okay? And then what this is doing is this is telling C++ Go to the memory location, go to the memory location 
right? Whose address is in P. Okay. This is gonna be a little bit long, so I'll put this on a separate line. Okay. And get that value or access that location. Access that location. So here, what's happening is, is I'm going to the memory location whose address is in P. Well, whose address is in P? X's, okay? And then I'm telling it to retrieve that data, right? I'm pulling it out, just like if I had pulled it straight out from X, and then I'm setting that to C out, right? So this will print the contents of X using remote control, right? Using indirection. I'm controlling the contents of X through the pointer, okay? So I can do that, but I can also, you know, access the uh, contents like I just did there, but I can also, also change uh, X using the pointer. How am I gonna do that? All right, star P, go to the memory location whose address is in P, and then this time we're going to assign it 15 okay so then we'll print out the contents of x using the traditional method right and then we'll also do it using the indirection operator okay so let's see what that looks like okay so you can see we've got the memory address up there and that was from seeing out P on line 18. Then, or excuse me, yeah, seeing out P on, on line 18. And then we got 22, which is the result of seeing out X on line 19, right? Because X had 22 in it. And then on this next line, we see 22 again because we're retrieving the value of X through the pointer, right? Line 22 using the indirection operator. Go to the memory location whose address is in P and pull out that value whose memory address is in P, memory address of the X variable, okay? So then line 15, or number 15 here, that's the result of line 26, right? We're displaying the contents of X again. Why is it 15 now? Because on line 25, we said, go to the memory location whose address is in P and assign 15 there, or put 15 there. So when we see out X, we change the contents of X, by using the pointer. We use the pointer on line 25 to do that. So we retrieved the contents of X, you see 15, and then on line 27, we said to C++, go to the memory location whose address is in P, retrieve that value and send it to C out, right? So we use the indirection operator right there to do that. Okay, so one more thing I want to show you, or two more things. Okay, you can define pointers in multiple ways, right? So you could come up here and do something like this, for example. Okay, so what this does is this creates two pointers that hold integer memory addresses, okay? You just have to make sure that for every pointer, if you wanna do it this way, that for every pointer, you gotta put an asterisk in front of the uh, identifier, okay? So in this case, you know, it's in front of the P here, okay? And then here you got the Q and then the, and then the R. Okay, so that's for one thing. Another thing you can do is you can initialize them. So I'll create a variable uh, Y here, okay? And I could do something like this, equals Y. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can do this. Just play with it. So here, you know, the variable Y was created. And then here we initialize the contents of the R pointer with the memory address of uh, Y. Okay. And so then um, I'll assign a Y, I'll initialize Y with um, 88. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll um, add the contents Let's add the contents, add the contents of X and Y using pointers. 
then store the sum in um, how about Z. Okay. Uh, then store the sum in Z using a pointer. Okay. So let's initialize Q with the memory address of Z. Okay. And then Let's write the statement that does what we just talked about. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to put into Z, right? We're going to put into Z the sum of X and Y, but we're going to do that by using the Q pointer. Okay. So that's the first thing. All right. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to access the contents of Y. Okay. And the contents of uh, X. Okay, so let's understand what's going on here. Okay, so let's look at the right side first since that's going to evaluate first. Okay, now what is R pointing at? R is pointing at Y, right? Because it's got its memory address. So what's in Y? 88, right? So that's what's going on there. Now, what about P? Okay, we're saying go to the memory location whose address is in P. Well, whose address is in P? The address of X. Okay, and we're saying retrieve that value. Well, what value is in X? 22, right? So P points to X, which has 22 in it. Okay, now the right side is going to evaluate first. So those, when we add those two numbers together, we're going to get what, 110? Okay, now once we get that 110, we got to put it somewhere. Where are we going to put it? We're going to put it in the memory location whose address is in Q. Okay, that's what that means. So whose address is in Q? Well, let's go back up here and look. We put the memory address of Z. Okay, so it's gonna go into the Z variable. And so once that's done, we'll see out Z, right? And we'll prove that it worked. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so there you can see Z equals 103. Now, why does it say 103? Because, remember right here, I changed the P to 15, didn't I? Or excuse me, I changed the X to 15 by going to the memory location whose address was in P and then putting 15 there. So at that point, X contained 15. So that's why we have our uh, 103, okay? All right, so one very, very, very last thing, all right? Um, remember variables, if you don't initialize them to something, then you have no idea what's in them. All right. So what's in them could be any value that was in that memory location at the time that the program ran. That includes integers, doubles, cares, right? The normal type variables, but it also counts for pointers, right? So if I have a pointer double star D pointer, for example, right? Right there, what's 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 D pointer pointing at? I, I have no idea, right? It's gotta be pointing at something because there's some value that's been assigned to D pointer, right? There's no such thing as an empty uh, variable, okay? There's gonna be some value in it. Whether you assigned it or not is the only question. So what you do is with pointers to make sure that you can't accidentally dereference an invalid memory location, you assign it no okay or more specifically null pointer so you know once you're done with the the pointer when you're not going to be using it you can do this use keyword null pointer okay and what this does is this has in a very semantic way almost literal way it has it set up to where you know q is pointing to nothing R is pointing to nothing. P is pointing to nothing. So null pointer right here, these things are defined as zero in header files. Okay. So what you're doing essentially is you are assigning zero to Q and zero to R and zero to P. Okay. So zero is not a valid memory location, right? All 
um, memory locations, all memory addresses are positive integers. Okay, so if you have um, zero assigned to QRP, they're not pointing anywhere anymore. Okay, um, you know they, you don't have them pointing to some random weirdo place. So this is kind of like putting the safety on the gun, right? So you can't accidentally shoot yourself and accidentally dereference um, a memory location. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.